Alright, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about domain and range. And in general, finding a domain is not so bad. Finding the range of a particular function um, or formula expression that you're given is going to be a bit more complicated. But first off, just to give you some intuition, Let's look at my first graph here, and you'll have to forgive my uh, artistry. I am not an artist. Suppose this is an oval. Yeah, I know, it doesn't look quite like an oval, but let's pretend it is. Suppose that it hits the y-axis up here at positive 3 and at negative 3, and it hits the x-axis at negative 1 and positive 1. Basically, the domain represents all the x-coordinates so all the x-coordinates that get used. So what I mean by that is, imagine, okay, so for example here at the top, this is the ordered pair 0, 3. So 0 is going to be a number in my domain because if I list all the points on this graph, at some point I'm going to use the x-coordinate of 0. And let's start at the top and think about what happens. As I move to the right, the x-coordinates are going to get bigger, 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 and bigger until I get to 1. Then they're going to actually decrease until I go back to 0. And now the x-coordinates are going to decrease, 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 decrease until I get to negative 1. And then they're going to start increasing again. So if I were to write down all the points on this graph, and there's infinitely many, so we don't want to do that you're basically going to get that the domain is all x values between negative 1 inclusive because the point on the far left would be using negative 1 all the way up to positive 1 inclusive so that would be the domain of my first one and another way I always thought about it was you know to find the domain I would move my pen or pencil up and down and I think okay am I getting X coordinates yet well not yet not yet and am I hitting the graph yet not yet not yet oh I finally hit it still hitting 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 it until I get the positive one and then I'm no longer hitting it anymore well if you were to shade in all of those places on the x-axis when you're saying I'm hitting it I'm hitting it I'm hitting it I'm hitting it I'm gonna get these x coordinates between negative 1 and positive 1. Okay? The range is going to be the same thing. I think, okay, if I start at the bottom, so again I'm doing my oval here, I think, am I getting, am I touching the graph yet? Well, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. I will be once I hit negative 3, and I'm going to be continuing to hit the graph all the way up until I get to positive 3. So if I were to list all the y-coordinates that get used, that would be everything between negative 3 and positive 3. And that's what is known as the range. So the range for that graph would be from negative 3 to positive 3 inclusive. Okay. So suppose on this next example I have a parabola. And let's suppose that this is up here at the x-coordinate, excuse me, the y-coordinate of positive 2. Well, if I do the same thing to get the range, for example, okay, I'm not hitting it, I'm not hitting it, I'm not hitting it. The first y-coordinate I'm going to get is positive 2, but if the graph keeps going and then keeps going, I'm going to keep getting y-coordinates forever and ever and ever and ever. So the smallest y-coordinate I hit is positive 2. So let me squeeze it in here. So that's the range. So the smallest thing I get is 2, and it's going to keep going off to infinity. And to do the same thing for the domain, if this thing keeps spreading out to the left, so let's make it a little more lazy, it keeps going to the left, and if it keeps going to the right, again obviously I can't draw the entire graph, but if it keeps going off to the left and it keeps going off to the right, Okay, certainly I'm getting an x-coordinate of 0 right at the middle. As I move to the left, I'm still hitting the graph, still hitting the graph, still hitting the graph, still hitting the graph. And 
okay, I've stopped drawing it, but the graph would keep continuing on out here. I would still be getting more coordinates, more coordinates, more coordinates. So it would go all the way back to negative infinity. Likewise, starting at zero, I would keep getting more coordinates, more coordinates. It would just keep going, keep going, keep going to the right. And actually, I would use every single x coordinate. If I, you could give me any x coordinate you wanted, and I could find a point on this graph that has that x coordinate. So in fact, the domain for this function would be everything from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity. So this is the basic idea with domain and range. It's what y coordinates are you using on your graph the, that represents the range. What x coordinates are you using on your graph that represents the domain. So definitely take a look at another one of my videos. I'm going to talk about finding domain and range from just a formula. Maybe you don't have the graph at all. We'll talk about finding domain and range. Do a few different problems. And then also, without having a graph, to be quite honest, finding the range again is pretty difficult. Typically if I see a problem and they say find the domain and range and I just have some formula, some equation, I can almost always figure out the domain without too much trouble. The range though, if the formula is really complicated, um, there's really not a good way to figure out range, at least not that I'm aware of. In that case, you would probably want to resort to trying to graph it. And if it was a complicated equation, in that case, you know, use a graphing calculator um, or you know, some kind of computer program to help you out. In general, though, if they give you a formula and ask you to find the domain and range, it's probably a graph that they expect you to be able to graph. So anyways, check out my videos, my website on justmathtutoring.com. Um, there's calculus videos at the top and a whole bunch of algebra videos at the bottom. Feel free to dig around and find some more domain and range problems.